All right. We played an iteration of Blue Black Flash once prior. And at the end of it, I thought, Brad of the Destroyer seemed really sweet. And I wanted to leverage this with more Mutate cards. We have Pouncing Shore Shark here as other Flash Threat. That's reasonable with Mutate. We got Sea Dasher Octopus. Because we're playing 12 Mutators, I've also elected to try out four Baby Godzilla here, who's kind of kind of my boy this season. Really love, really love the Baby Godzillas, the Rune Reborn. So, God, Godzilla or Cunning Nightbonder on two lets you Brada on three. One thing that's kind of awkward to note is you'll notice I'm only playing two Nightbonders in this build. And the reason for that is this is a human, so you can't mutate onto the Cunning Nightbonder. So even though Nightbonder does reduce the cost of this, you can't mutate onto her later. I've got a couple of main deck Aether Gusts because standard is what standard does. Um, with Baby Godzilla in the main deck, Aether Gust in the rare case that we had a matchup where it's dead, we can draw a discard through it. As far as the sideboard goes in this deck, um, I, I played a few matches with this off stream and I found the Luris matchup to be incredibly challenging. So four Cry of the Canarium and some Disfigure as extra spot removal really feel like they go they go a long way towards making that matchup uh, from hard to just like borderline good. So let's go ahead and hop on into some matches here with this and see how it goes. Uh, Aether Gust is notably dead in the mirror. Yeah, Shark Typhoon's just kind of expensive. This is an aggro deck more than anything else, and, like, paying three or four mana for a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2 two, two flyer just is, like, a pretty medium rate. Baby Godzilla on two means you can mutate Shore Shark onto it on three, which is great. Who's a cute little baby Godzilla? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Wow! What a monster! Have you, have you no heart? Have you no soul? You killed baby Godzilla! Properly respected the strongest card in our deck, right? I don't know where these sleeves are from. Uh, I think these were something you had to purchase at one point. If I, if I recall correctly. Titan's Nest. Interesting. There's a Mew Yangling bundle. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, I technically should have let them scry first. Whatever. Whatever. Is Cardboard Live showing the wrong cards? I actually had Cardboard Live request that if the cards were wrong, if someone could sh get a screenshot for me. So if, this, if, you, if you're capable of producing a screenshot and the Cardboard Live is wrong, please, uh, please do it. Thank you.
Baby, baby came back to daddy. Alright, so they get to re-escape Uro here, but then we get to jump the shark and bounce them both. Yeah, for those for those that haven't kept up with magic recently, Baby Godzilla is exactly that. It's a skin. So same same card, different name. I'm doing the pouncing shore shark in response to them drawing here in case they draw a mystic dispute. Oh you love you love to see it, chat. You love to see it. So what's the line here? Is it just Shore Shark? I think it's just Shore Shark. And then keep shark, shark, baby, or keep shark, uh, shark plus this one. So this is plus one damage if I put it on here, so that's not worth it. We'll attack with these. Oh, losing baby means I can't mutate this. That's awkward. Probably okay though. Good health is easy to find in war. Hey, Huckaberry, I appreciate you sending me that screenshot. You can't you can't mutate onto you can't mutate onto humans. So if we draw an untapped land next turn, we can mutate Bretta. That's unfortunate. And again, like, this has been... So I played a little bit of this deck off stream, actually. And what we're currently seeing happen here was my experience in a lot of my games. Where, like, you got close to closing things out, but you could never quite get across the finish line. We might, we might still steal this, but... We definitely have an, incre an increasingly shrinking window to be in this game. Yeah. 
We could have mutated earlier and killed the Liliana. No, I couldn't have. I never, I never had a window to mutate, right? Because uh, when the Liliana down ticked, when the Liliana down ticked, I, uh, I would have had only one creature left, though. Then that creature would have died to, uh, to a thing. To a removal spell. It's like, I could have gone all in on a single creature. You're right, but that wouldn't have been good. So, they're actually in a spot where, well, they're, even, they're not even dead if we, if we hit, right? Because if I hit, I can go kill this, bounce, bounce, but then I still only have seven. Oh, wait. Uh, this, the one, if we hit an untapped land here, they're actually exactly dead because they'll lose a point from this. And we continue, continue to swing and miss. I guess, I guess we do this to try and draw a land this turn. They just have infinite cards at this point though. So if we would have if we would have hit the swamp instead of the second brat of there, we would have mutated onto this, killed this, bounced these, and attacked for exactly seven. Rise and shine. The more I played uh three or four matches with this deck off stream the other day. Um because I felt like playing Magic. After all I do is play Magic. And um, we're going to... I'm not going to... I've got the, I, I've got this and one or two other iterations of Blue Black Flash in the queue. But if they still continue to feel mediocre after those sets, it's probably going to be an archetype by Blacklist. I'll see, I'm not, I'm not optimistic that this archetype is competitive after playing with it off stream the other day. So, while I believe you that you're having good luck with the Sultai variation, in my opinion, it's weird to me that you're describing your deck that's playing a bunch of 4-drops as more aggressive. We played a Sultai build on stream the other day too, and it felt okay when the mana worked, but the mana also didn't work in a lot of games. Uh, we win, right? Did we steal it? I think we stole it, right? So we put this under here. They lose one. This... This gains flying. We get to... Kill... This... And then we get to bounce... These... And then we attack. Yeah. It feels, feels like we, uh... Feels like we got away with one here. All right, Aether Gust and probably Dispute. Dispute's probably... How do I feel about Dispute versus Quench here? Not sure how I feel about Dispute. Dispute versus Quench. What are my... What are my trims? Cunning Knight Bonder just gets blocked by a lot. Can't mutate onto it. I mean, Dispute counters big Liliana. I could just trim. This seems fine. This is four, nine things that counter big Liliana. I think this is good. I don't think I want to go down below 24 creatures. Maybe I could trim creatures. I don't know. Eh, that seems fine. Can someone please tell me why Dirge Bats are played in the Demir, Demir Flash variation? 
Because a 3-3 flyer for 3-4 to four mana is reasonable. With flash. Dirge. We're playing four Dirge Bats in this deck. The, the black drop that we just played. That mutated with the Sharks. Yeah, Dispute. Dispute draws dead a little bit later. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you played you play it out of the 3 3 flyer and then you put the octopus on it and it kills something and then it's an evasive threat that draws cards. So this is this is Dirge Bat, Bread of the Destroyer. Yeah, it's possible that Spectral Sailor is better than the Cunning card that we've played. I think I want to just try and hit my land drops here. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle that. I agree, based on my experience with these very various mutate creatures, I think a lot of other people aren't aren't valuing them properly just yet. With pouncing shore shark in this build, Brad is also extra good. Nissa. I just brought it in response here, right? And then... I get to go land, mutate this, kill Nissa. They did fix Gyrudon Moto. That's why I added, I updated tomorrow morning. We're gonna start with the Magic Online segment actually. Because they did fix it. I actually didn't yet, Corinne. I think I think I'm gonna give them away on Saturday during downtime on the stream. Because we're doing we're doing the tournament on Saturday. Again, I hope anybody that had questions about why we're playing Bretta is now quickly realizing why uh, why we do. This is why we do. Do 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 do. Beep 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 beep. Yeah, I'm in big agreement with that. Anybody complaining about companions? I'd much rather play against companions than Tefries and Ember Cleaves. Just like full stop. I want to neutralize this because if I kill it, they get a tool back out of their bin and it fills the bin for Uro.
Their deck doesn't have any traditional reach in it, so I'm just going to take this hit here. Bat, Bat is drawing lots of cards. Yep. I elected to put Shore Shark on this other one rather than the Bretta because I don't really want to go all in on this and bouncing the land is very similar to uh bouncing the land is very similar to killing it. I do I do enjoy the drawing cards aspect of this deck. Sorry, baby. I still love you, baby, I swear. I'm just I just don't need you right now. I'll need you I'll need you soon again, I promise. You know, there's games where like the deck doesn't feel good enough, or there's games like that where you just like run people over. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I need way more games. The reason why I'm not optimistic this can be powerful enough to keep up. But I've also accepted it a couple more times because I've played enough magic to know that gut feelings need to be, you need repetitions and need to get practice in. There's no, there's no substitute for hard work in magic. You need to, need to put in the time. Is this double baby down? I think it's double baby down. Sorry. Sorry, baby. Daddy loves you, I swear. I swear things just haven't been working out recently. <laughs> Please forgive me, baby Z. Baby GC. Super, super awkward here that I'm going to have to... Cur if I don't draw a watery grave... I'm going to have to choose on turn three between holding up Neutralize and holding up Slitherwisp, which is a little bit awkward. It's the correct play, but I don't have to be happy about it, Chad, okay? Oh, I actually, I'm an idiot. I don't, right? I'm dumb. Ignore me. I have this. Pay no attention to the idiot at the microphone. So... Probably want to cycle this, right? Since Cunning Night Bonder stops her things from being countered. I was just testing you, chat, and some of you passed. Some of you didn't, but some of you did. I'm playing this during their upkeep. So this way, if they have a two or three mana counter spell, they have to use their mana on this turn cycle. And this is doing it on their upkeep means they can't play their fourth land yet, so they can't frill Mystic me. Just John, thanks for the 10 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Good, good chance we're just dead this game at this point. We mulliganed low and we're on the draw. Oh, they're missing a land drop. That could be a saving grace. Let's play an untapped land out here to play around Quench. Could baby does get disputed, but it is what it is.
Hey, I'm Hurst. What am I looking forward to the most with this weekend's open? Hopefully having a smooth production from start to finish. Yeah, I should have blocked there. Yeah, yeah, my buddy Matt, the the, the the last one was gonna be joining me on uh gonna be joining me to do commentary again. We'll always have a second commentator. If Matt if Matt's up for it, it'll probably just be Matt all the time. Uh probably because they have red cards. You can always find my favorite decks on my website every day here, Digital Dead. As for pigeonholing me into most competitive, I don't know. Anybody that thinks they have it locked down what's competitive and what's not by now is very silly. Yes, Brad Nelson is playing on Saturday. Ooh, that's a good one. Send the knight back, back, ambusher back to its owner's hand here. Pouncing shark, do 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 do. Pouncing shark, do 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 do. Pouncing shark. Look at those arms. You think he works out, Chad? I think he works out. Oh yeah, that's true. We were supposed to get a patch, right? Did we get a patch yet? Yeah, it looks like the MSI should probably restart my client and download the patch here in a second. You had a patch when you booted up? Okay, we'll restart after this match. Man, if they cast this Nightback Ambusher, we're just going to destroy them. Destroy that one, return that one to your hand. I think we're a little bit behind at the moment, but not too bad. I should have played the Temple of Deceit last turn. His opponent, why do, why do people keep asking about four color flash? They very clearly have three different colors. This is a mono blue card, chat. 
Do you see the split colors? This is a mono blue card. Stop it, chat. Get some help. Maybe the second baby is better than Cutthroat here. That could be the case. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think... I feel like I mismanaged some of my choices this game. Yeah, Arena... To give credit where credit is due, Arena's system for applying patches has been very, very good for the last few updates now. Really, really feel like they've done a stellar job with it. Although two messages, as I, as I compliment them, two messages in a row like that is obnoxious and unnecessary. Arena R&D, how good lights the patching system? Tear it down. Tear it down. Tear it all down. Do they have the Bone Crusher Giant? They attacked earlier like they kind of had it. Yeah, I think we're I think we're dead. Feels dead. Yeah. I guess I guess I can flash this in and trade in combat, so maybe we're not just dead. So it doesn't feel good though. Dead, dead, dead do a lot. Dang, I agree. I agree that we were too far gone. It could have also been right, though, that if I put them on the Bone Crusher Giant earlier, that I should have traded my 4-3 for their Night Pack Ambusher. I think that's possibly the mistake I made. Like, instead of instead of trading for their 2-2 two -two and the Bone Crusher Giant stop the previous turn, I should have just traded for this. I think it's prob probably was the play. I just bring in Aether Gusts and Heartless Axe, trim the quenches, extra removal and Murderous Rider. Snap it off.
Don't be afraid to play your spells on your turn in these flash mirrors when your opponent's tapped out. A hey, Misha, thanks for the two thirds of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. It's right to just play this now. Double stop and coming, right? Nice counter spells. I wonder if I wonder if we're supposed to have some number of duress in our sideboard for these pseudo mirrors. That could maybe make sense. Have efficient ways to punch through some of their counters and generate good double spell turns. Yeah, pretty, one of the key things about the key things in these mirrors is often being the first generic double spell turn, which is why Mystic Dispute is good. Rid of the second Brata here. Okay, baby, I choose you. What are spells? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Whoa, 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 I think Yorion is playable in a main deck because the blink effect is so good. In the Enigmatic deck that we played, we played Yorion. Yorion in the main. I haven't I haven't seen a lot of people playing much control. And the ones the ones that I have seen seem kind of mediocre. Although we did play Sultai on stream the other day that felt very reasonable, so like maybe that's fine. Yeah, the 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 ones that I've seen are pretty few. Have been few and far between, and they haven't they haven't seemed particularly competitive. I'm sure maybe maybe some kind of control will pop up this season, but so far it hasn't seemed. Uh... Esper is well positioned. Can you explain why you think Esper is better than Sultai? Uro, Uro is a really good magic card. What does what does the white give you? I'm not sure that I'm not sure that Tefri is better than having access to access to good green cards. 
So I don't, I don't actually, I actually think Elspeth Conquer's death is a lot worse than last season because there aren't really great things to get back with it. I feel like Dream Trawler's power level fell off a good bit. Hey, ACV Gunslinger. Thanks for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Oglandia. Thanks for keeping me around. So like, just I just timed somebody out because I just wanna I wanna talk about something that is never okay on my channel, which is that when I disagree with you, it is never acceptable to just come back and say, well, we have a difference of opinion. In, in my in my opinion, it's never okay to come back and just say we have a difference of opinion. We should talk about it, but to just like refuse to engage with my point and have a discussion, that's not helpful. Just like just like don't if you have a dissenting opinion with mine and you don't want to engage and have a talk 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 about that dissenting opinion, don't post it in chat. You are welcome to have a dissenting opinion, but if you're not going to articulate it and have a conversation about it, I don't want to hear it. Because if you just want to say, no, I think that's wrong, or I disagree without having a conversation, that's not useful or helpful to me. It doesn't, it doesn't help me learn. It doesn't help anybody learn. It's just noise in my chat. Opinions are kind of like onions if you can't spell. <laughs> that's uh that's a good line. I appreciate that line. Opponent has drawn so many lands. They have eight lands in play, and I have nine lands in play. So, no, the opponent hasn't really drawn that many more lands than us. So I'm going to wait till my turn to Pouncing Shore Shark because if I untap, I can Shore Shark through a Mystic Dispute. I can actually, I have so much mana, I can Shore Shark through a Mystic Dispute and through a... And through a Quench. Seeing, I feel like, so a key difference here between what my flash deck is doing, what my opponent's flash deck is doing. You'll note here sideboard, key sideboarding differences too. Like, my opponent had Quench in for both games 2 and 3 here, and because they were leaving in such a critical mass of counter spells, both games where I was able to get a creature down onto the battlefield, they were unable to get, get back into the game, right? Like, I basically stuck a creature, and then they couldn't, they couldn't do anything. How are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're in the world. Thanks for dropping in here today. If you're a new viewer, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream Magic and other strategy card games full-time here on Twitch. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without the support of all my wonderful subs, so thanks all of them for keeping me employed. I'd also like to plug a couple of my wonderful sponsors here. BCW Supplies, the only ones I trust to protect my paper. Magic the Gathering cards using code Hoaglandia at bcwsupplies.com. You can save 10% on your purchases of sleeves, binders, deck box, and all sorts of other fantastic gaming accessories with them. Grimoire Deck Boxes does specialty wooden deck boxes in all sizes, ranging from individual decks up to 800 cards for an entire cube. And you can check them out uh, at Grim uh, Grimoire Decks. I'm gonna people that don't put their URL on their banner, they catch me up if I haven't done this a lot. 
Inkgaming.com will lift up and customize your gaming experience. Head over to Inkgaming.com forward slash Jeff to support my content here. I get custom play maps, mouse pad binders, and bags with them. Hurley Burley Studios does professional magic, the gathering, altars, and you can check them out at HurleyBurleyStudio.com. And of course, CoolStuffInk.com would love to buy and sell all sorts of cool stuff with you. And you can use code Jeff5 to save 5% on your purchases of singles there with them. Look at that. Mostly, only partially mumbled shill through uh through a arena patch there. Easy peasy filling that uh bit.ly forward slash hugo box. Look at that. Look at that. Keep. This guy would notice is sleep. Thanks for the tip to grab the decklist of YouTube while Deckmaster was down. Perfect. I think Deckmaster should be up, Dr. Jones, too. So if you want to take a peek at my website, it should be available again. The list on the website is a little bit different than what YouTube is. I mean, Crokies is human. He's allowed to take days off. I'm gonna do this now, just in case they're a counterspell deck. He is, he is, he is in fact a machine. If you look at, there, there are sites that log public facing Twitch stats of like how much people stream. If you compare how much Kroki streams to how much like the next magic person streams, it's kind of unreal. I think, I think even with my crazy weekend, my last seven days are like only, only, I think I'm probably still less than him. I'm, I'm curious now. I want to look at the seven day log. So I've streamed 56 hours in the last seven days. And he's been live. He's been live for 61. 60, 61. So like I've, I've worked an incredibly long week by most standards. And I'm, I'm five hours fewer than him. It, it's probably also fair to say that I do. It's probably also fair to say that I do more off stream than he does. But his note just can't can't come close to his live hours. Ilsta Bob, thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, and like obviously different kinds of content. Different kinds of content too. Like what I what I do, the way I format my content tends to need a little bit more off-stream stuff than how he formats his. And that variety is the spice of life, right? Like, it would be kind of dry if every streamer did exactly what I did and vice versa. Virna, thanks for the brand new Prime Sport. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hooglandia. Thanks for keeping me around. I don't really know what they're doing. We just saw, like, some Soul Tide Colors and some Doom Blades. I'm going to bring in a couple of Mystic Disputes. I may or may not want Aether Gust, depending on exactly what they're doing post-board. I think I'm going to trim a Bouncing Shore Shark here, maybe. Yeah, maybe Godzilla. Maybe Godzilla is a little bit worse if they're killing her stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my two drops. Let's trim a short shark. Cardboard Live is supposed to handle the mutate cards correctly. Let me let me relaunch Cardboard Live and make sure it's just updated appropriately. It was supposed to have. That seems fine. Apparently my cardboard live had not properly updated for the patch. Oh, that's a good draw. So let's fix that. Maybe that's why the companions weren't working. It didn't update the last time I ran it. 
That would that would make sense. They said they fixed it so companions were working. Be interested to see next time we play a companion match if that's the case. Cardboard Cardboard Live is supposed to supposed to support. I will I will say this. The big thing I miss coming from coming from Linux is uh not having a package manager on my operating system is a real letdown. Having having to have every application individually manage its updates instead of them coming from a centralized repository is uh is a real medium. And for those for those that aren't familiar with the technical jargon, a package manager is basically like what your cell phone has. On on Linux based operating systems, pretty much all of your software comes from a a centralized package repository and handles all the updates automatically. That's basically what it is. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and tuck um I'm gonna tuck the C Dasher under Baby Godzilla here, because there's a non There's a non-zero chance that my opponent's playing cry, and the extra point of damage is less important than this dodging cry in the long term, I think. There's there's like some third third party things that like try and emulate a package manager a little bit. Like I think one there's one called like chocolatey. Or something like that, but they're not quite the same. Yeah, disfigure as well is a real consideration. Until your package manager breaks and you have to reinstall your OS again. Um, as someone that's like used Linux for like the better part of the last like decade and a half, um, that doesn't happen on like stable branches. Like if you're using like bleeding edge software, sometimes you get cut. That's why it's called bleeding edge. Yeah, whenever whenever there's non backwards compatible updates, those also suck. You're not you're not wrong. Hey, is it handling mutate properly? Sick. Well this well this game is over. We're done here. And again, Brata showing some of its power with these additional with these additional mutate cards. Being being able to trigger this. The actual mutate cost on this is really high, but being able to trigger that mutate effect with other cheaper cards is really, really powerful. Yeah, C Dasher. C Dasher is unreal good. Just like constructed playable card on its own, that's also a very cheap mutate enabler. You have to uh, right click on the card and hit C Mutations. You brought me lunch? And a treat? Oh, I knew I loved you, honey. A real hug and not a sideways hug. hug. Oh, you're wonderful. I think I'll keep her chat. Are you winning? Well, we were gonna win, and then they just I I look. You came in, and then I came back, and all my things were dead, honey. Oh, he's cute. He is adorable. Oh. They say he's got to go, baby Godzilla. I think we just play this now. It's the boss. Act like you're working. Open the tab with video games. <laughs> uh, Thanks to 11 months, Petsu. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, we are... Technically nine. Technically Eight nine. And Eight and a half. Yep. A but bit. probably six. six. Yeah. That's why we're actually talking about scheduling the May open for historic and ideally we want to do it after the next historic anthology drops speaking of if you if you want to help if you want to help poke wizards into giving us information feel free to retweet and like this status 
see if we can maybe pin them down and when we're going to get that next expansion. I, I ideally want our next historic open to be after the next anthology drops, but I also would prefer the open happen on May 23rd. But if it's not going to be out by the 23rd, I want to push it to the 20 to the 30th. The last the last update said sometime in May. No, you should not cut Snapcaster Mage from your your just your just guy deck. We've not shared the baby name yet. Christy wants to keep it secret. I think I'm supposed to mulligan this on the draw. Just like, no, no two mana plays a pretty big, pretty big no on seven. Hey, look, a two drop and no lands. Feels magic, man. And baby, baby Godzilla right here. Baby Godzilla. Do, 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 do baby Godzilla. Her name is Secret, confirmed Demir, baby. Is it because you've named her Twitch chat after us and you're keeping it a surprise for us? Hard, hard pass. Hard, hard pass. This matchup's probably really bad, huh? I don't have a good way to take Oven off the table. And I can't really, like... Like, getting getting Bratta seems really important so I can fly over the cat. Uh, the price to name the child is $1 million. And it's payable, payable in form of cashier's check or bits only. Ragnar Forge, thanks for the four months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Now we can, I'd legally make the name whatever you want for a million bucks. I could talk the wife into that. A million, a million dollars is going to go a long way, chat. And we can, we can just call her whatever we want while her legal name is something else that we got for a million dollars. What about Bearer Bonds? I'm an 80s action movie villain and that's all I have. <laughs> Listen, I'm not new to Twitch yet. I know I can't just say there's not a number because they'll keep asking. You just got to give them a number that's realistic. So, I think I'm supposed to see Dasher here. Is there a reason to not run Graph Tigger's Cage in the, bo in the board? Yeah, because those decks don't guarantee die to that card if you, if you aren't killing their stuff. So, if you look at my sideboard, the sideboard graveyard hate I've elected to play, 
I should have put that over the top. I clicked under by mistake. Um, if you actually look at my sideboard, I've elected to play four copies of Cry of the Canarium, which I think is better than Graf Digger's Cage on average against the Luris decks. Because not only does it exile their stuff, but it cleans up their board too as well, which is important. What's the crowd? The crowdfunding price is 10 million. And I understand the power of the internet. Yeah, the $1 million price tag is only for one person giving me a cashier's check that clears or in bits. Naming my child, Dwight. Naming, naming my child. The crowdfunding price is higher because it's more likely to happen. And I, and I really would prefer you don't get to name my child. I'm, I'm realistic. I understand the realities. How much is it to rename Jake or Declan? They aren't new anymore, so is there a discount? <laughs> y'all, y'all are awful. Life, I feel like life's probably gonna be weird for the children of people, people like me, in a in a decade from now. Hopefully, hopefully they're they're not too screwed up. We'll see. I guess I guess to be fair, it's probably not any different than like being the child of someone that did reality TV, right? Reality reality TV has been a thing for a long time now. All right, so really need to draw a counter spell here. For people saying could have quenched it and then gusted in response to the fetch, I didn't have four mana chat. I had, I had three. I think we're probably dead, right? I don't, I don't think I can beat this plus a single round of activations here. This is a matchup where my counter spells seem pretty bad. I think I just want these pieces of spot removal so I can kill. So I can kill what's it called? <sighs> Mayhem Devil. Probably leaving a couple of neutralizes because they cycle. This figure doesn't seem particularly good. The things that I really need to kill that doesn't tag. Matchup. Matchup seems hard. The Luris, the Luris matchup has felt reasonable because of Cry. But this opponent is notably playing Mayhem Devil, which Cry does not tag, so it changes the dynamic a little bit. <clears throat> I 
That's probably probably true, Terran Terror. Well, I have a fun question that we haven't talked about on stream yet. Does anybody in chat have strong opinions on children's playground equipment for home use? Christy, Christy and I have started looking into getting some type of playground structure for our backyard at some point this summer. I have strong opinions on everything. God bless, Twitch chat. God, God bless. I'm gonna bottom a land here. Get a little greedy. Keep my spells. I always wanted one as a kid, so I guess I'm a pro. Get something you can pressure wash. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good feature to think about being able to tick off. Do's versus don'ts. Opinions on brands. Thoughts on thoughts on what what we should put underneath it. We're we're considering Yeah, we're we're considering what to put under it. So like our backyard is all lawn right now, all grass, but we're considering like do we wanna put like rubber mulch under it? There's this rubber plague this rubber grounding that you can purchase to put under it. But a lot of those places don't have the price of it on their website. No, definitely not getting a trampoline. Put foot-long spikes under it to teach them to never fall. Yeah, yeah, we don't know what the pricing on that stuff looks like, Coons. We need to, we need to get, get an estimate. Rubber mulch is A tier. Rubber surfacing is B tier. Grass is C. Wood mulch is D. Yeah, we're definitely not going to do wood mulch. Why do you think the rubber mulch is better than a rubber surface brimstone? Bounce here. Makes sense. Wood mulch is hollowed fountain and modern. <laughs> that's a, that's a strong one. Um That's unfortunate. Stay away from glass mulch. <laughs> staying staying away from glass mulch sounds like a strong play. Gonna gonna consider that. Gonna gonna take gonna take staying away from glass mulch to heart. So, going to get to see Brad here, hopefully. Flex a little bit of power again. Alongside the C-Dasher Octopus. Again, the Mutate cost on this card is rather prohibitive in terms of its cost. But when you have combined it with other cheaper Mutate cards, it's very, very reasonable. 
world's fattest vegan. Thank you for the brand new Prime Support. You know, it's funny. I'm a vegetarian, and I've been I've been a vegetarian for uh, about 12 or 13 years now. And I often, my buddy often needles me and tells me I'm a junkitarian. Because I am definitely up there for one of the world's largest vegetarians. I'm not a vegetarian for health reasons, chat. Got, got the dad bod going on. Brad, I would like to destroy that one. Plus one on Costco. Yeah. I'll have to look at some of the local places. DJ Squareface, welcome. Thank you for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one wherever you're at. Yorian Exiles Fires. It does. That's why it's sweet. Mr. Zock, thank you for the brand new prime support. Welcome, folks. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday wherever you're at in the world. If you're going to be around this weekend on Saturday, if you're into hanging out and watching Magic tournaments, we are going to be streaming the second Hoaglandia Open. That is going to be this new standard format on Arena all day. If you didn't see coverage of the first one, we have very reasonable production quality, I think. Um, we have... Be, we're able to display both players' hands appropriately, so you're not just sitting there guessing at what one player has going on. Excited to see. We have 256 players signed up for it. Should be should be a fun day. Crockett, let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for the 12 months of support. Mayhem Devil. I think we might be just dead to this devil again. That's rough. Uh, this is the Mew Yangling sleeve. It was part of a uh, package with the Avatar at one point. There is not Firestone, so a Prime, Prime, you have to show up in and drop it off every month. I have Prime as well, and usually I set a calendar reminder to go renew it. If you, have, if you have Prime, make sure you use it every month. Think about it. Think about it as like donating a dollar from Jeff Bezos or three bucks from Jeff Bezos to someone here on Twitch. Lord knows we need it more than he does. Dizzy B, thank you for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Thanks for the 18 months, Chill, Chill Shades Racer. Um, I think I'm just passing... So, I'm going to go ahead and Slither Wisp into Cutting Knight Bonder here. This doesn't pump the Cutthroat, but I could draw a Sea Dasher Octopus with this trigger here, which would let Brad I kill the Mayhem Devil, so I'm going to play to that out. Probably dead because the Mayhem Devil is going to go unchecked here again. 05 Dean J, thanks for the brand new Prime support. And this kind of highlights a little bit of the struggle with interactive decks like this one that we're playing very early on in a format. Because my sideboard right now is not well set up for killing Mayhem Devils. Like, I have decks in my sights like the, the Luris decks and the Fires decks. And the answers I'm playing for those don't line up well into killing Mayhem Devils. So, like, when I run into a deck with Mayhem Devil, we have a hard time when it shows up and we can't take it off the board. If you are interested in possibly um, playing in the event, but it is full, you should be around Saturday morning with a deck list ready. I'm going to talk with Christy and MTG Melee staff tonight. I don't think they have an official wait list. We can probably start an unofficial one. You can also keep an eye in the open section of the Discord channel. A lot of people, we had someone had that dropped out because they had other plans come up and they posted in there that they were they were dropping from the event on Melee. I'm not, I'm not sure if Melee has an official wait list. How long has this deck been going for? A little over an hour. This is going to be the last match with this one before we roll on to the blue-green Genesis deck. Yeah, yeah, we hit the cap for the event last night. And then our plan is to let people know when the next event is going to be pretty far out. So that way people can make plans and schedules and join early. JM Before, thank you for re for the second month. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, 
Uh, I think I'm actually keeping this island because this island lets me curve uh, two drop into hold up neutralize. Is four cards not enough to answer Mayhem Devil? I don't think it is, Vernash. Like, when when you literally lose the game, if they get the card and keep it into play, I don't think four cards is enough, no? I think that's a little on the low side. If it's, like, a card that's, like, just annoying but doesn't make you instantly lose the game, maybe four is enough. But, like, your four to beat their four of where when they have their four of you lose the game, I think you probably want 1.5 to two times as many answers as they have cards that you have to answer. I need to double check the math, but I think doubling to 512 only would only add a single round. Part of part of the, the struggle or problem with doubling to 512 past that too. And this is one of the reasons why they don't do this in a lot of paper tournaments. Is one of my one of my goals for the event series is to aside from like the top two to three spots pay out prizes based on record as opposed to top eight top 16 top 32 and expanding up to 512 players means the way in which i have to structure the prize support differs because the number of people that can have specific records as you scale up in players is different it's like there's there's a lot more people that could potentially have seven wins for example, when you add add that extra round in. Yeah, yeah, it'll also one of one of the reasons why definitely in front of the counter spell here. Uh, one of the reasons why we did the first 11 round event in under 10 hours was because it was double elimination and the more people you start with, the longer it's going to take for the rounds to get faster. I don't know how bits work. Put this towards playground equipment. Sounds good, zombie token. It's kind of... It's weird to me. So, like, Wizards of the Coast just started... Just started doing their E-League tournaments again. And while the E-League tournament seems novel and interesting, I played in one last time, the amount of prize support that they put up for an event like that, that only like five people get to play in, is so weird to me that they don't do more like big community supported events that lots of people can play in. Like, I think they put up like three, four, five grand a night for like five or six weeks for that. Whereas, like, you know, the event that we're running this weekend, 256 people are getting to play in, and it's just, you know, we put up 500 bucks in store credit from Cool Stuff Inc. because they're great. The whole, the whole, e it's, it's really weird to me. I feel like one of Magic's real strengths as a competitive game or semi-competitive game, whatever you want to call it, is how much you have the ability for normal people to to play like unlike games like like big open tournaments are things that i feel like are more common in magic than in a lot of other games and it feels like with this whole esports push and wizards lack of an in client tournament mode they've really like lost those roots a little bit Please play more tempo control. Next sounds good, MTG Firestorm. This one's back in the queue in a couple different iterations already. Hearthstone runs five open tournaments a week and they're not in their client either. Sure. 
five per server. Wow. I don't know, Rhino. I mean, at, at the end of the day, like, normal people are the ones that are, like, the lifeblood of their product, right? Create a token that's a copy of target permanent. When it enters the battlefield, this fights one target creature you don't control. Oh! This card can copy... This card can copy things you don't control? That's really neat. I definitely missed that this card can clone your opponent's stuff. Yeah. Huh. That card is... I'm gonna counter it. But, like, that card's, like, a lot more interesting to me than it was 30 seconds ago. Like, that... I definitely missed that line on Mythos. Tommy Disco. Thanks for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Oglandia. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, I think... I think there's a chance that that might make it constructed playable. Yeah. Very, very, very real chance. Can I copy lands? Whoa! This is a ramp spell too? Alright. Alright, I'm super into it. This is actually... Huh. Yeah, you can clone their planeswalkers? I don't, I don't know what I want to do with this, but I definitely want to play four of them in something now. No, I'm not sure what the what the rest of what the rest of this is doing, but yeah, yeah, that's a really that's a really neat design. Yeah, yeah, I had, I had skimmed this in a in a spoiler skimming, and that uh, that seems really good. Yeah, and like. The fact that it's any permanent means that this is actually super useful outside of Teamer, right? Like this is this is technically this is technically a ramp spell any blue deck can play, right? Hey, Sinesis Kaporian, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, huh. Uh, let's guess this one. Probably pretty far behind at this point. Drawn, drawn quite a few lands. If we, uh, if we peel a Brata, Brata, mutate onto here, kill the Cavalier, smack them, might get us out of this. Hopefully they escape this Uro here and this Quench gets to be live. Opponents put played around Quench really well. Night Bonder just gets stonewalled real easily. Bring in the disputes and the murder shredders and the extra ether gust seems good. You've been waiting a few days for a response. Uh, you should you should resubmit it, Doctor Mister Bunny. It's probably it probably got lost in the churn. As a heads up to any decks that I haven't already approved, the minimum for arena deck submissions for the time being is being increased to twenty five dollars for the stream because I just have that that big of a backlog. Even even a twenty five dollar donation is probably going to wait two weeks or so to get played. Big, big demand. No triumphs in the mana base. Playing more than four comes into play tap lands is a very real cost. I think temples are better than triumphs on average.
Eat a second blue source at some point, but not for any of the spells currently in our hand. One of the nice things about Baby Godzilla is that you get the draw discard and the cost reduction even when you're not mutating, you're just playing the creature with mutate. So we'll get to play Brata next turn and loot. Yeah, Ops, Ops an interesting one. If the format has less mono red in it, and it seems like it might, Opt could potentially be something that's very useful in a deck like this, I agree. In a in a format where you don't have time to do that type of thing, though, it's not great. The uh the two cunning whatevers, the two two for two's been rather unimpressive. I could see replacing that with Opt. If you had if you had four Opt to the decks, you can probably cut a land. You like cut the land, the two cuttings, and like maybe the fourth quench and fit some copies of opt in. Opt is opt is again though notably really bad against mono red. Nah, you could just submit that, J Man. I'm into it. Send the dollars. One of those games where we're on the play and have pressure down. An opponent's done a whole lot of nothing and we've got some counter spells so in a pretty good spot here. Cut up on VODs from yesterday. Do you have a website or something? Uh, I mean, if that's a serious question, yeah. JeffHoagland.com uh, This is going to be our last match with this deck. We've been playing it for about an hour and a half now. And we're going to roll on to Blue-Green Genesis. I mean, that depends on very specific aggro matchups, Firestorm. So, like, you're right, having Cry against exactly the Luris deck is very important. But Cry against Red aggro, for example, frequently doesn't have text. It's not, it's not useful if their board is bigger than it. And Annex is typically the card that's most devastating in that matchup. The open did fill. We filled last night. It's very exciting. I think if one mana is borderline too much mana for selection, two mana is definitely too much. Why does this butte constantly show costing one? Because arena must be bugged. Yeah, yeah, there was a client patch today. What's, what's the what's the line? 99 little bugs in the code. 99 bugs in the code. Take one down, patch it around. 102 bugs in the code. It's like playing whack-a-mole chat. Just constant. Constant. Yeah, yeah. That song is pretty agile. I agree. Uro doing what it does best and just making games feel incredibly out of reach for our semi-aggressive deck. Pretty happy to get a Mystic Dispute hit here. This card was looking to be draw dead very quickly. Get just right at the tail end, she does. I don't know. Like I said, the jury for me is still out on if this archetype's competitive, but if it's it's still incredibly satisfying to play regardless. 
This is this is the play patterns of this deck, in my opinion, are enjoyable on this side of the board. They can be pretty frustrating to play against on that side of the table. But when you're the one actually doing the flashing, I enjoy it. Yeah, I don't I don't know, Kinder is. Like what what is their their formal testing plan is like a real real question, I think. I think I just let this happen. Because I think I'd rather Aether Gust. I'd rather Aether Gust the Uro when they put that into play eventually here. All right, and they go to target Reef. I'm going to go ahead and Brine Boar Cutthroat into Murderous Rider, kill the Risen Reef. And if this is a blank, they're then dead. We have exactly seven here. Oh, they have, they can diddle, Thassa can diddle one of our creatures. So they're not, they're not dead. Good call. Good call. Hey, diddle diddle, the Thassa and the fiddle. Uh. Okay. Yep. Listen, chat. Listen, chat, we take those here. Oh, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I like this build better than the other builds we've played in the past. I feel I feel like the other builds don't have enough real card advantage in them with just Dasher and Slitherwisp. And I feel like adding Bratta as a consistent source of hard removal feels really good. In fact, I think there could be a discussion, and this is something we're going to talk about here in the wrap-up. I'm not sure I really like Quench in this archetype. I feel like there's a chance I'd rather just have more hard removal in my deck and just, like, only have Neutralize and, like, maybe Gust and Dispute as, as things I want to be doing for Counterspells. I'm going to keep the extra counter here. Put Duress in that slot. I mean, I don't really want Duresses in my main deck. I don't think Duress is a good main deck card. There's too many, too many decks that don't have a high density of it. Stream Decker isn't working on mobile. There should be two different plugins that let you get the deck list. So try the other one at the minute. The first one doesn't work. But enjoying standard with Ikoria so so far. Yeah, I think so. It's been fun. Yeah, Brazen Borrower could be okay, I guess. I don't know. I kind of feel like I want more ways to just actually kill creatures. Yeah, ty Tyrant Scorn could be a card worth considering. I think more actual hard removal is good. Brazen Borrower is not removal. We're just living in an Aether Ghost world. We really are, Lazy Man. Thanks for the seven months. Welcome back. Sure. Is Heartless Act main deckable? Yeah, de definitely.
why isn't Trawler good anymore? Um, here's, let me answer your question with a question. Which decks that you have been, that you have been seeing play in the current format, do you think Trawler is good against? We played a Yorian Elemental deck. We have! You can find it up on my YouTube channel and my website now. I mean, one, Trawler was only okay at the end of last season. Two, a lot of the a lot of the kind of go big decks in this format don't really care about Trawler for the most part. Guy Ruda, these fire decks, they all go big in a way that's much bigger than Dream Trawler is able to present. I think comparing Shark Typhoon to Dream Trawler is kind of silly. Those are pretty, pretty different cards in terms of what they do, I think. You get sideboard recommendations this deck. What does that mean? You want me to tell you how to sideboard? I mean, you can go back and watch the set that we've played and see how we sideboard it easily. Keyword counters have not really been a thing, no. Have we looked at Pelucranos with mutate cards? I have not. Pelucranos. Pelucranos is kind of a tough sell. Four mana, four mana to not impact the board is rough. Who's your favorite Animal Crossing villager? The only games I am playing outside of Magic right now are uh, Raid and Pokemon Sword. And shoot, Pokemon Sword. So can't not. I have I have enough unfettered capitalism in my normal life. I don't need unfettered capitalism in my video games. If you're in if you're in the subs discord, there's an Animal Crossing channel and there's a group of people that talk about it in there though. So like if you if you enjoy Animal Crossing, more power to you, but it's not it's not not a game for me, chat. Just just not that into it. No, it's bugged. If you drag it up, it asks you to pay 3. It would it would not let you cast it in that instance. So I could Aether Gust this Cavalier and then smack them for four. And they have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So with the dispute, they then can't Yorion and this. So I think I think that's the play. And then my hope is next turn I draw another untapped land and we brat a mutate onto this because this is this is baby underneath. So this we can mutate for five, and we'll mutate onto this, kill something, bounce another, kill them. Is the is the play here? Because they got a little aggressive. Yeah, the fact the fact that it doesn't keep baby underneath is really sad. I'm sorry, baby. Alright, let's look at him. There's baby. Baby's underneath, chat. That bug needs to be fixed ASAP. 
Can't put baby in a corner, right? All right, there's there's an Uro, but we could dispute that, right? What's up, Paris? Thanks for the 21 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, so... We win if we draw an untapped land. If we draw if we draw an untapped land, Baby Shark takes flight. Do 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 do. And they're dead, right? We just, uh, we kill this, we bounce this. Actually, I'm gonna bounce the Cavalier just in case this is a cantrip. I don't want them to be able to, like, put this on top and then cantrip into it and kill my shark. Metafuse, thanks for the 14 months. Welcome back. It was good, Sticks. I think I think that deck needs to be changed into a Yorian deck, potentially. Any idea why a developer on MCG Weekly would state Heartless Act as being more powerful removal spell over Sure Tactics? I have no idea. Probably because it's easier to cast. Yeah, this is this is definitely my favorite iteration of Flash so far. Um, really, really a big, big fan of Bretta in general. And Pouncing Shore Shark, the more I play it, the more, the more I really like it. Um, Cunning Nightbonder and Quench feel like cards that I'm like the least sure of or certain of in this deck. Feel like, feel like neither of them are really punching at an appropriate weight class for my, for my liking. Um, someone else suggested Opt earlier, and while I was kind of down on Opt in previous formats, I think the idea of trying Opt out right now does seem pretty reasonable. While Mono Red's not non-existent, um, there's definitely less of it in my experience in the ladder so far, and again, that could change as the format develops, but I kind of, I kind of feel like if I were to play this again right now, I think I'd do, I'd do this. I think I'd put, I'd put four ops in the main and a couple of Tyrant Scorns here and then just lean on Neutralize as my only main deck counter spell. This is like a pseudo counter spell. This is the really only main deck counter spell. And then I have this, this sideboard felt pretty reasonable for the most part. Maybe if I'm trimming, maybe if I'm trimming Quench in the main, I want to go up Mystic Disputes in the sideboard potentially. Night Bonder's okay. I don't know if it's really sideboard playable either. The fact that we're leaning on more Mutate cards means that the Night Bonder gets worse because Bonder is notably a human and you can't mutate onto humans because humans are lame chat. Super, super lame. Spectral Sailor. Spectral Sailor could be could be okay. I like the idea of Opt before adding another threat though, I think. Um, Aether Gust Main is a super reasonable main deck card right now. A really easy way to think about is Aether Gust Main Deckable. Every deck that plays a Triome in this format has something that gets hit by Aether Gust in it. Every every Triome has an Aether Gust color. Past just most decks having something that gets Aether Gusted, this deck's also playing Baby Godzilla, which draws cards and discard cards, which means in the matchups where you draw Aether Gust and it's dead, you can draw a card and discard a card. You think Graft Digger's Cage is the best fit into any deck, Graveyard Hate, and Standard? Yeah, I think if your deck doesn't get impacted by Cage, Cage is a fine board card to play. I've elected to play Cry of the Canarium in my sideboard as my Graveyard as my graveyard Hate card of choice because I have counter spells to try and beat up on the Gyruda deck. What makes Tyrant Scorn better than Heartless Act? Um, the flexibility on it. So Tyrant Scorn can notably be used to bounce your own creatures as well, which can be very useful. The being easier on mana isn't isn't really a thing. 
Like one blue isn't a big deal in a lot of situations. So I think I think the flexibility of this being able to save our own creatures from removal is a is a big deal. We played Sultai Flash in Historic yesterday. You can find it up on my YouTube channel and my website now. I'm open to building blue black flash there, although I'm not sure offhand exactly how it changes. All right, we're gonna roll on into another standard deck up next here today. We've got at least three more coming. We might add more than that if we stay at a good viewer count. I'm going to go ahead and hit a quick ad roll while I get my uh, client restarted. I need to run and brush my teeth as well because I just had some lunch so I can put my Invisalign back in. When we get back, we are going to uh, take a crack at uh, mutating auspicious Sterex for the first time to, for the first time since the set release. We'll be back in just a few. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for hanging out today, folks.